Hello, everyone. Welcome to our topic five mastery check review. Today, we're going to be talking about the sum and difference formulas. Now, just as a reminder, these formulas are going to be given to you on your test, so don't be stressed if you don't know them off the top of your head. But if you could open up page 50, that would really help you because you would have them in front of you for this practice set. So in this first one, they gave us a problem. They asked us to solve it by working backwards. So immediately what I recognize here is we've got cosine, cosine, sine, sine. What that immediately tells me is that is going to be a cosine sum and difference formula because that's how our cosine formulas were set up. The cosine of a plus or minus b was equal to cosine a times cosine b and then the opposite sign minus plus sine a sine b. So in this one, I definitely know I'm working with a cosine problem, and I additionally know that it's going to be the opposite of this sign. Cosine is always the opposite of whatever sign is inside. So this is going to end up becoming cosine of 11 pi over 9 minus 2 pi over 9. So cosine of 11 pi over 9 minus 2 pi over 9, that's going to end up simplifying to cosine of 9 pi over 9. And 9 pi over 9, we know, simplifies to cosine of pi. Those two 9s are going to cancel each other out, and we get pi. So what I would do is I would go to my unit circle, and I'd say, mm, what does cosine equal at pi? We know that pi represents the line that goes straight up on the unit circle. So pi is going to be up here. And cosine is always representative of the x value. So here it's going to be over 0, up 1. That's not pi. That's not right. What am I doing? That's not right. Sorry. Cosine of pi. Pi is going to be over here. Whoops. Which we know that's the representative point of negative 1, 0. And just like I was just saying, cosine is always the x value. So in this case, the x value is negative 1. So I know that cosine of pi equals negative 1 as my final answer here. For question number two here, it says find the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So this time I'm looking at my sine sum and difference formulas. The sine sum and difference formula is this sine of a plus or minus b equals sine a times cosine b. And we keep the same sign. If it's plus, we keep the plus. If it's minus, we keep the minus. So we're going to put plus minus to represent that. And we flip-flop it and do cosine A times sine B. So all we're doing is plugging in our numbers there. We know that the A is representing pi over 3, and B is representative of pi over 4. So anywhere we see an A, we'll put pi over 3. Anywhere we see a B, we'll put pi over 4. So we end up with sine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4. And then since it was plus, or sorry, since it was minus here, we're going to put minus here. We're going to keep the same operation. And then we flip-flop it and do uh, cosine of pi over 3 and sine of pi over 4. And so we're just going to go on our unit circle and fill that out. I'm going to start with the pi over 4s because that's a little bit easier. We know that pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 in both the sine and the cosine spot. So we're going to put square root of 2 over 2 for both of those. I'm going to keep my minus operation. And then for pi over 3, that one's going to be a little bit trickier. That one's on the 60 degree mark. So I know that the sine at pi over 3, the y value at pi over 3, is going to be square root of 3 over 2. And I know that the cosine or the x value there is positive 1 over 2, 1 half. And now we can go through and work this out. We're going to start by multiplying. So we're going to multiply these two fractions together and then these two fractions together. So top number by top number, bottom number by bottom number. So here I got square root of 2 times square root of 3. So we get square root of 6. And 2 times 2 is 4 minus. Over on the other side, I got 1 times the square root of 2, which is square root of 2, all over 2 times 2, which is 4. And since they have the same common denominator, we can keep that common denominator. Now, when I go to do this top part where I have square root of 6 minus square root of 2, earlier we were allowed to multiply the square roots, and that's, that's allowed. You can multiply two square roots, like up here when we multiplied square root of 3 times square root of 2 to get square root of 6. That's allowed. What we cannot do is we cannot add square roots together. So when you get to this step where it says square root of 6 minus square root of 2, that's as far as we can go. We're going to have to stop and leave it just like that, square root of 6 
minus the square root of 2 divided by 4. All right, for the level 3 question, they have us doing tangent of 275, but we actually have to find our own numbers that work this time. We need to find two numbers that we could either add together or subtract to get 275 and rewrite our problem in terms of that. So I think I'm probably going to worry about trying to do two things that I could add together. What two things could I try to add together to get 275, where both of them come from the unit circle? Um, 230, is that? Uh, no, that's not going to work. Hmm. Hmm, hold on. Those are interesting numbers. Let's see, 275. Could I subtract 280, 320, 320's not on the unit circle either. I hope I didn't put a bad number there. Hmm. Hmm. I think I might have screwed up and put a number that doesn't work. I really think I did. Um, yeah, I think I did. 275, 45, let's see, 135. One, it's not 135. Give me two seconds. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a mistake. I should not have typed this number. We'll fix that. So let's change it up and let's do tangent of... Um, sorry, let's do 210, 210 plus 45. Let's change this and do tangent of 210 plus 45, so 255. Change that to tangent of 255. All right, so with it being tangent of 255, which you should already say, actually, we're going to end up with 45 degrees plus 210 degrees. So those are the two numbers I'm going to use. 45 plus 210 would give us our 255. And now I can go ahead and plug those into my formula. The formula for tangent is tangent A plus or minus uh, tangent B. And on the bottom, we do 1 minus plus. I put the minus on top because if it's plus in the problem, we change it to minus. And if it's minus in the problem, we change it to plus. So it should always be the opposite of whatever's on top. And then it's tangent A multiplied by tangent of B. Well, we know that our A is 45, so tangent of 45 plus tangent of 210. And on the bottom, we're going to switch the sign, do 1 minus, and do tangent 45 times tangent of 2, 10. So at 45, remember tangent is y over x. So at 45, the y and the x are both square root of 2 over 2. So we're going to get square root of 2 divided by square root of 2, which is going to be 1. So both of our tangent 45 spots are actually going to have 1s on them. Okay, and then we need to figure out what the tangent of 210 is. Tangent of 210 is going to be an interesting one. If you take 210, it's going to end up giving you the square root of 3 over 3 because it's going to be, here's 210 right here. And that's going to give us uh, negative, negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. So when I do y over x, I end up getting square root of 3 over 3 for those. So this is going to be positive square root of 3 over 3, positive square root of 3 over 3. So what I need to do then is on top, I need to, uh, I can't really do anything with the top part, right? The top part is just as it is, 1 plus the square root of 3 over 3. On the bottom, I can multiply. So 1 times the square root of 3 is just going to give us 1 minus square root of 3 over 3. Now, I don't really want to work with these fractions. I really want these fractions to go away. So the easiest way to fix that is I could multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by 3. The reason I could do that is 3 times 1 is going to give us 3. And 3 times the square root of 3 over 3, well, the 3s are going to cancel, and I just get 3 plus the square root of 3. And on the bottom, same thing. 3 times 1 is 3, and then that minus, and 3 times the square root of 3 over 3, the 3s would cancel, and I would just get a regular square root of 3. 
Uh, and we're still not done though, because we're not allowed to have radicals on the bottom like this. So we're going to multiply this by three plus the square root of three on the top and the bottom. The reason I choose to do that is we take whatever the bottom equation is, we leave it exactly the same, except change it to the opposite sign. So since this was a minus, I want to change it to a plus, And we multiply that same thing on the top and the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and do some foiling here. So on the top, 3 times 3 is 9. Is 9. Uh, 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be 3 square roots of 3. 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be another 3 square roots of 3. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is going to be square root of 9, which ultimately just becomes a regular 3. And in the bottom, I get 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times square root of 3 is plus square root of 3. Negative square root of 3 times 3 is going to be negative square root of 3. And then negative square root of 3 times positive square root of 3 is going to give us negative 3. So on the bottom, the positive square root of 3 and the negative square root of 3 end up canceling with each other. In the top part, I could add this 9 and this 3 together to give us 12. And then the square root of th 3 square roots of 3 plus the 3 square roots of 3 is going to give us 6 square roots of 3. And in the bottom, I've got 9 minus 3, which is 6. And so the last thing I could do here is just separate this out and divide each one. So I've got 12 over 6 plus 6 square roots of 3 over 6. So the 12 over 6 would give us 2. And the 6 square roots of 3 divided by the square root of 6, the 6 would cancel. And I just get 2 plus the square root of 3. So that would be our tangent answer that we are trying to get to. All right, and the last one on here says, given that sine of theta is negative 12 over 13 and the tangent of theta is greater than zero, and given that sine of beta is 3 fifths and cosine of beta is 4 fifths, find the cosine of 2. That's not right either. Oh, geez, it's been, it's been a day. Find the cosine of theta plus beta is what that should have said. It'll be fixed on your notes, don't worry. So theta plus beta is what we're putting in there. So we already know the betas, right? Sine of beta and cosine of beta, done. Done, done. I don't need to do anything extra. The problem is I don't know what the cosine of theta is. I only know what the cos or sorry, the sine of theta is. So we need to draw a coordinate plane and figure out what's going on here. So here it is. I know that my sine is in a negative space, but the tangent is positive. So for sine to be negative, I know it has to be in the bottom two quadrants, in either three or four, so three or four. But I know that tangent can only be positive in three or one. So the only way I'm going to get this to work is I'm going to have to go into quadrant three and put my triangle there. So here would be a picture of my triangle. All right. So with my triangle right here in quadrant three, we know that sine, if the sine of theta equals negative 12 over 13, sine is opposite over hypotenuse from geometry. Speaking of which, my theta would be right there. It's always going to be closest to the origin. So the opposite would be the top number, the 12. And the hypotenuse is going to be this diagonal line. So now you can see from here what I'm doing is I'm going left and then down. Anytime we move to the left, we know we're putting a negative number. So I know that my x value here is going to be negative. And anytime I'm moving down, I also know it's going to be a negative number. So it's going to have a negative 12 here. So I just need to figure out what goes into that missing space right there. And we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to do that. Negative 12 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. I'm going to get 144 plus b squared equals 169. When I subtract 144 from both sides, I get 25. So we know that B has to equal 5. But again, because it's going to the left, I know it's technically negative 5. So there is a few important pieces of information we need to pull out here. We already, like I said, knew our sine and cosine of beta. Right here, I know that the sine of theta is negative 12 over 13, but I also need to know the cosine of theta. So since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the adjacent is going to be negative 5. And the hypotenuse is going to be 13. So I'm going to need those numbers as well, that negative 5 over 13. And now I can go ahead and set up my problem. Cosine of theta plus beta. The way this formula works, we put cosine theta times cosine beta. 
and then change the sine, the operation, to the opposite for cosine. And then we do sine of theta, sine of beta. And we're just going to look at our math here that we have. We saw that the cosine of theta from just right above it is negative 5 over 13. And we saw that the sine of theta is negative 12 over 13. That was part of the math we just solved. If we look for beta, we're going to have to look back up in the problem. So sine of beta is 3 fifths. So that's going to go here. And the cosine of beta was 4 fifths. So we're going to put our 4 fifths here, keep our operation. And we're just going to multiply top with top and bottom with bottom for each of these fractions. So the first one, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. 13 times 5 is 65 minus. Here I've got negative 12 times 3, which is negative 36. And 13 times 5 is 65. And what's going to happen here is we're going to end up with negative 20 over 65 minus a negative. So it's going to become plus 36 over 25. And 36 plus negative 20 is going to give us 16. I don't know why I put 25 there. I meant 65. 16 over 65 as a final solution for my cosine of theta plus beta. So hoping that helps you out a little bit on this first one, topic five. Let me know if you have any questions so I can keep helping you out and have a great day. Bye.